What's up, folks? All right, welcome to another edition of Darrell's Picks. Um, and so I got a listener question or a follower question um, from my social media, matter of fact, from Instagram. Um, you know, but you know, which leads me to first say, if you have any more questions, if you have any more suggestions, thoughts, anything y'all want to hear on Darrell's Picks, be sure to go um, and send us, you know, comments, DMs. Email me at Darrell Smith at thesportinglifenotebook.com um, for your suggestions and things you might want to hear, insights you might want to get from me. But this week um, also is brought to you by Beretta USA. Um, make sure that you guys go to Beretta.com and use my promo code TSLN15 and get 15% off um, when you go and shop for the latest and greatest in Beretta Threads. Um, and all kinds of stuff like that. We are here to talk about bird dogs for beginners. And you, you know, I'm here at the kennel. I've got mine and I will, I fortunately have three of the four dogs that I will actually kind of talk about that I think are good for beginners um, and some things to kind of think about. So I want to kind of break down a couple of items like say two or three um, that just kind of go into what to consider. Like, I can't really tell you what breed to get, but I can tell you what to consider and make your breed choices based off of like these key points. So the first thing is, you know, what are you planning on hunting? You know, when we talk about a bird dog breed, you know, there are what folks call, you know, specialist dogs, like what I got, you know, and, I, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, and then you got versatile dogs you know, which has been a very, very popular thing as of the last, you know, few decades, you know, as it is. So what I mean by specialist dog um, is really a pointer or setter. And, and that's a dog that does the job really, really, really well for game birds. Like they point feather and that's all they care for. And I'm not talking about waterfowl. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about upland game birds. Um, that is a different type of dog that requires a different type of attention. Um, and, you know, you have certain strengths and certain weaknesses that kind of fall in line with that. But those dogs, all they care about is feather, finding upland game birds, not waterfowl, not fur, you know, anything like that. Um, and the reason that I like that type of dog is I'm just not looking to train for a variety of different things. I actually, you know, and I'll get into that too, but that's why I got my lab. So when you want to consider, you know, what type of dog or what breed of dog to get in the, in the bird dog world, um, think about what you want to hunt. Don't get a specialist dog, like a pointer or a setter. If you know that you're going to want to go and hunt, you know, different types of game and, and, you know, you're going to want to squirrel hunt and you want to grouse hunt and you're going to want to, you know, uh, 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 you'll just want to do a bunch of different types of things. Um, you'll, you'll want to go hunt Bob Whites and waterfowl. Like if you want that type of dog, honestly, in my opinion, for a beginner, for a dog like that, you want to hunt rabbits, all of that, get this guy, you know, get Mr. Ruger here, Labrador Retriever. Um, and I say a lab over another dog that I'm going to talk about first is because out the box, usually labs, labs are all are, are, are right. Like they, they usually do dang well out the box for and, and are a very, very utilitarian dog. You don't need to teach them how to point. If you get one from field lines, I'm, I'm a good friend of Mike Stewart. Go to Mike Stewart and get a British lab, get a Wild Rose lab, you know, not, not even a point lab. I'm not talking about that either. I don't, I'm not a fan of labs pointing. That's not, I got bird dogs for that. But if you want a good dog, go to get a lab. It out the gate, that's what I learned how to hunt wild quail on, matter of fact, before I got into pointers. Um, you know, we, we got it done. Usually you get one, you know, check your hips, check all of those things, make sure that, that, that you know, all of the things that would keep you in the field for a long time, like make sure that stuff is in place. <laughs> It's Cairo. So make sure that stuff is in place. But out the gate, a Labrador Retriever is just going to be 
your best bet. Um, as far as a dog that you can hunt with is going to respond as a puppy. They're knuckleheads as puppies. Yeah, they are. But, uh, you know, they're, they were the most popular dog in America up until this year for a reason. You know, and that reason is they're reliable. They gel to you. And as, as and they were the, you know, they were some of the, the, the original, you know, hunting dogs. And, and their history goes back a long way. Um, you know, they just get the job done. They know they know how to do the job and do the job well. Um, as far as labs, you know, it's what you want. I like he's an American uh, Labrador. They're both the same thing. They're not. It's not a distinction in the breed. It's a distinction in what is asked for and what they're breeding for. Um, my next lab, if I do decide to get one, will probably be from Wild Rose. Um, and it'll it'll obviously be a British lab. Um, I want something a little more upland focused. The reason I say a British lab is, or I want a British lab is because it's, it's a dog that's a little more geared to upland. Um, I don't really hunt waterfowl as much as you know, as, as what I think a, an American lab is good for. And I know American labs are good for Upland too, but I like the idea of a British lab for what it is that I'm trying to do. And also it's a tradition thing down here, you know, having pointer setters in, in labs, you know, is, is really a tradition thing. Um, you know, I like, I like American dogs, but if I do decide to get another lab, I want to try a British, uh, next time. So that is, you know, that is the type of, of work that I'm thinking you should consider. If, you, if you're a beginner, you don't want a dog that points, it'll flush birds, it'll flush game, do all that stuff. It'll retrieve very reliably. You just kind of got to get it, you know, get the idea in his head, get a Labrador retriever. Okay, so next dog that I want you guys to think about as far as like, uh, if you're hunting a multitude of game, like I said, fur and feather. Um, what I want y'all to consider is, again, think about the breed pool, now the genetic pool, all right? That's something you should definitely consider. So in the genetic pool, do these dogs have a lineage and, and a proven lineage to say that, okay, it's grandparents hunted really well, there's a track record of this dog doing really well in the field. You know, if you have a track record of that dog performing well in the field um, from generation to generation to generation, that's why you have five gener generation pedigrees, and it's bred well, think about what it is that you're getting based on that. And I say that because I want to talk about a continental breed that is very popular. Everybody has it. Everybody that knows me knows that I talk a whole lot of mess about them. But it, it honestly, in truth, they're very good dogs, and I do understand why people get them, and I will definitely advocate for getting them for a beginner under certain conditions. German Short Hair Pointer. I actually, if, again, if you want a dog that will hunt fur and feather and do it well, get an American German Short Hair Pointer. That sounds so funny, American German Short Hair Pointer. What I mean is a German Short Hair Pointer from American Lines, um, not a Deutsch Kurzar, DK. That's, the, that, that's a totally different dog. It's a little bit sharper of a dog for most beginners. Um, that, that's a, that you'll see a lot of that in Navda and stuff like that. But a DK is not the same. It's, you, you, they're not breeding for the same things. You know, a, a, a German short hair pointer from American lines is, is gonna be a very, very solid dog for you. Um, got a lot of friends with them. They're, a little too popular for my taste, I, but I can appreciate the fact that they do get the job done for the dogs in that continental breed category. Um, let me also give this caveat to German short hairs. And I, I, like I said, I appreciate them, got plenty of friends. Um, they are a little bit more vocal than my pointers. And I do have a fairly, I got two pointers that are fairly vocal um, as puppies. And they kind of grow out of that. Um, but German short hairs are, are, are very, 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 um, expressive dogs, um, can whine a bit. A lot of them that I've met, all of them have whined quite a bit. Um, and they can, they, they, they're a little bit closer hunting of a dog. Now you can get short hairs that 
run. I mean, that really range. You need to be, you need to think about how you want to hunt and where you're gonna hunt. Don't get a short hair from field trial lines that is bred to run off a horseback. And I would say the same thing for pointers and setters too, when I'll get into them, but don't get a dog that you know is going to, that, that again, it's parents and genealogy and lineage. All of them hunt within a certain type of range, ask the breeder for that. But a German short hair is gonna be the most reliable experience. And one thing that I say about all of this stuff for beginners, like there are a lot of upland hunting media, this and that out there. And, and it's great, it's all wonderful. But in, 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 in those platforms, a lot of the people that we speak to, a lot of us in and of ourselves as, as hosts and stuff, sometimes we get dogs that are a little bit more exotic. Like I've got a dog that I imported from Ecuador. He's a little bit different. You know, I've got a pointer that I imported from Ecuador. That's a little bit different than my American pointers. Um, and, and that's not so far fetched as saying like, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and saying getting like a Bracco Italiano. I don't think that's a, a beginner's dog. I just don't. Um, I think they're good dogs. I think they have a, a, a hunting style that, you know, is is really interesting and really cool and really intriguing it's completely opposite of what it is that i do but that's the beauty of it but where i think people go fall short is those type of dogs sometimes i worry about the establishment of a genetic pool here in america because you know you're importing dogs from other countries and stuff like that you run the risk of not getting their best stock that's just the dead honest truth of it but um, you get dogs that, that have been here for a minute that have proven themselves time and time again. For newbies and beginners, I just don't recommend going and getting a bit more of a far-fetched continental bred dog if you are not 100% certain on what that dog's performative abilities will be and what its parents and grandparents have been you know, over a very long period of time. Also, when you're doing that, you're getting, you know, you also run the risk of a dog being a little bit sharper. And what I mean is, you know, it's got a kill drive on game that is very, very intense. Um, that's a lot to handle for a lot of people. You know, so that's something also to think about, or you get a dog that's more fur driven than feather driven. And, and, and you need to think about that. So. That is kind of my spiel on, uh, you know, dogs that, that, that point, retrieve, track, uh, you know, hunt waterfowl, all of that stuff. Like that is, that's the, what I mean, a, a versatile dog or a continental bred dog. All right, so the next dog that I'm gonna put out there um, as a good beginner's dog is a setter, you know, good old setter right here. English setter, um, if that's what you wanna call them. Um, like I said, I'm real particular about that English American, you know, classification, but, um, or the, the, the name in between, but you know, English setter or setter, whatever you wanna call it. Um, this is always a good breed to start with. Um, again, a specialist dog, so, you know, they'll swim, they'll do all the things. Don't worry about the myths and stuff like that. If you get one that's bred well, um, you know, from, from a good pedigree, this one here came from uh, Paul Cook from Alder Fork English Setters. Um, you know, his dad is Kaladin's Da Vinci. Um, mom is uh, Casita, um, you know, Paul's, Paul's female. And so this dog here is bred from, from you know, trial lines, grouse lines. Um, in that pedigree, um, but it responds really, really well to me. He's very, very dialed in, um, very, very cooperative. The dog finds birds. Um, he finds birds, I can't, I, and, and what's crazy is he actually does not run, he's not as hot a runner as my pointers are. Um, you know, but the dog finds birds and he does it really well, he does it, um, very methodically, almost mathematically is how it's been described, um, you know, from other folks hunting with him. He stays in line with you. Um, he's the dog that got me pointed 
you know, a point on a rough grouse, red phase in Minnesota um, with my buddy Dawson last year, and I hope to do it again. Um, but if you're talking about a dog that's more of a specialist um, and will go to town for you and hunt well, just be just like this, um, go with a setter. Good old, good old English setter. So again, I just want to kind of make a note, like I can't tell you what dog to get. That's, that's not the point of this. What I want you to do again is consider what it is that you're doing when you're hunting and get a dog breed that has a proven lineage and a proven track record of doing that thing. Try to steer clear of, of, of dogs that don't have the genetic pool to do so. Um, that is, that is if you, if you want to be upset, get a dog that does not have the proven track record um, and get something that you know works. I have a lab, I have a pointer, and I got setters. That is, that is for me, what works. I like specialty. My lab, if I need to do more things other than that, he has uh, retrieved rabbits for me, squirrels, all kinds of stuff, waterfowl, everything like that. And when I need them, and he flushes birds just fine for me. Um, but with my other dogs, all I do is hunt quail. I hunt grouse. You know, I hunt upland birds. That's what I'm looking for. So again, think about the, 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 the job at hand and also think about what it is that you know, proves that, 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 that dog's working ability. All right, folks. So outside of the dogs, of course, I got to let y'all know what I'm working dogs in today. Um, you know, and this is, this is, this is actually one of my favorite pieces here. Um, the Beretta, uh, ceramic face fleece. It's a lightweight grid fleece, um, that ensures optimal thermal regulation and breathability which is great again it's, it's springtime here um in georgia where you know the mornings are kind of cool and kind of starts to heat up throughout the day we're starting to get there but we're not quite hot um and i can work dogs very comfortably um in this i also have it in orange um you know in in the, in, in the closet as well for when i'm out hunting um, and one thing that I do like about it is the ability to layer it. It's super light and I actually don't need more than this. It actually, you know, regulates my heat very well um, on some of the coldest days down here in the Southeast. Um, and it's also quick drying. So again, when I'm sweating, it's rained. I've gone through all of that stuff. I've used both of them on horseback in the piney woods um, and also foot hunting. Never had an issue with drying out. It actually dried before it, it I, I had it dried within five to ten minutes after a pretty pretty tough rain in georgia georgia has this stupid rain thing where it rains real hard and then it's sunny um and you know this actually really did well um dried very 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 quick and did not stink which is something that um some of pieces like you know other companies have these things that are not necessarily wicking um you know, so that's something that I really, really enjoy about this. Also, the ceramic print, it improves the durability of the fleece. Um, so just ceramic kind of woven, you know, in through here. And the fleece can be used again as a thermal layer um, with a different outer shell from Beretta USA that I will also talk about as well in another video. So check out the Beretta ceramic face fleece at the link below um, and when you get it make sure you use my promo code tsln15 and get yourself 15 percent off of that particular order um, and get a few other things too so that's another edition of Darrell's picks from the sporting life notebook um, thanks for tuning in i was actually really excited to do that um, i know that sounded kind of biased about my dogs but no i i really do believe um you know in in making your chances ensuring that you have the, op the the most optimal chances at a hunt um, and doing so being comfortable while you are working dogs that you know for sure can get the job done. So thanks again, folks, and uh, we'll catch y'all next time.